I thought I'd start off by introducing you to a little Byzantine humour. I think humour is one of the best ways to learn about a culture, and um, one of the favourite forms of Byzantine humour, if you will, was character assassination. And an excellent example of this is um, the writings of the historian Procopius about the Empress Theodora, who lived uh, some 300 years before the period in which my novel is set. But um, I think this is nonetheless a good example of humour um, throughout the Byzantine uh, period, which I might remind you was almost 1100 years. So uh, enjoy with me, I hope, this um, uh, episode of Procopius writing about Theodora. Justinian took a wife, and in what manner she was born and bred, and wedded to this man, and how she tore up the Roman Empire by the very roots, I shall now relate. On the field of pleasure, Theodora was never defeated. Often she would go picnicking with ten young men or more in the flower of their strength and virility, and dallied with them all the whole night through. When they wearied of the sport, she would approach their servants, perhaps thirty in number, and fight a duel with each of these, and even thus found no allayment of her craving. Once, visiting the house of an illustrious gentleman, they say she mounted the projecting corner of his dining couch, pulled up the front of her dress without a blush, and thus carelessly showed her wantonness. And though she flung wide three gates to the ambassadors of Cupid, she lamented that nature had not similarly unlocked the straits of her bosom, that she might there have contrived a further welcome to his emissaries. Often, even in the theatre, in the sight of all the people, she removed her costume and stood nude in their midst, except for a girdle about the groin. Not that she was abashed at revealing that, too, to the audience, but because there was a law against appearing altogether naked on the stage, without at least this much of a fig leaf. Covered thus with a mere ribbon, she would sink down to the stage floor and recline on her back. Slaves to whom the duty was entrusted would then scatter grains of barley from above into the calyx of this passion flower, whence geese, trained for the purpose, would next pick the grains one by one with their bills and eat. When she rose, it was not with a blush, but she seemed rather to glory in the performance. For she was not only impudent herself, but endeavoured to make everybody else as audacious. Often when she was alone with other actors, she would undress in their midst and arch her back provocatively, advertising like a peacock, both to those who had experience of her and to those who had not yet had that privilege of her trained suppleness. So perverse was her wantonness that she should have hid not only the customary part of her person, as other women do, but her face as well. Thus those who were intimate with her were straightway recognised from that very fact to be perverts, and any more respectable man who chanced upon her in the forum avoided her, and withdrew in haste, lest the hem of his mantle, touching such a creature, might be thought to share in her pollution. I think this is a wonderful comment, uh, not so much on Theodora, but on the time, on the customs, for example, the mention that women should have their face veiled, which was indeed an old Roman custom, um, which was very much alive in um, Byzantium. Possibility to cover your face was an indication of class. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that, and you'll tune in for some readings from Queen of Lies later in the show. <laughs>